Yesterday we were doing a number of sound checks for our new sound system, so hopefully you can hear us well and see us a bit more clearly today. We have a new camera installed and things. So we had to do a sound check and I thought, look, I, we might as well just use today's reading. So we had two or three different community members doing this reading, and it's always a bit odd when they come to this line, you know. Do not be afraid, Jacob, poor worm. Israel, puny might. Uh, this is like God speaking to his chosen people and referring to them in terms that aren't exactly, well, I'm not sure that they're not exactly offensive, but this is like far from you know, the, the kingdom of Israel and the, the God's chosen people. Puny worm, sorry, uh, little poor worm and puny might. Right? Uh, so he's putting them, dare I say, down off, off, off any kind of pedestal they might have thought they were on. So, and then the Lord goes on. And he goes on to say what he is going to do. How he is going to renew things. So he starts, I am the Lord your God. I am holding you by the right hand. I tell you, do not be afraid. I will help you. The poor and the needy ask for water. There is none. Their tongue is parched. I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not abandon them. I will make rivers well up on barren heights and fountains in the midst of valleys. In the wilderness, I will put cedars and all these various trees. So the Lord is saying, I will take care of you. So he's trying to remind us not to be afraid of our weakness. It's okay if you're a poor worm or a puny mite. That's actually all right. I will take care of you. I will take care of you. So, we spoke about this earlier in the week as well, about our need to be you know, mature in the faith, to be, uh, to be, uh, to be kind of responsible as regards the decisions we make, rather than saying, well, you know, God hasn't provided a job for me, so I guess I'll do nothing in the meantime, or God hasn't provided a husband for me, so I suppose I'll just sit here and feel sorry for myself, or God hasn't provided anything really. So rather than saying, what have I? What can I do today? What good can I do today? Like, I, I have to actually start directing my life as well, you know? And then the Lord blesses this. So there's, there's this wonderful collaboration between us and God, right from the very beginning. And the Lord gives us the, the Great Commission at the end of Matthew's Gospel, for example, where he says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all I have commanded you. So the Lord kind of reminds us of his, author of his authority. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. So with this authority that I have as God, go. And he sends us out. Now, this is just this wonderful balance that we always have to maintain in, in the faith, you know, to recognize our littleness, our need, the fact that we're just a poor worm and a puny mice, and at the same time that God is going to do great things. But he does great things in us and through us, not despite us. In us and through us. Like, why, does he, why does he entrust the church to mere human beings? Why does he entrust the church to us when we are imperfect and when we make mistakes? Why not entrust the church to angels? They tend to make far fewer mistakes than we do. Right? Imagine, imagine like you've got to go to Mass, right? And this angel would float across the altar, right? And, uh, and celebrate Mass for us. Do you know? And it would always be liturgically perfect because they're angels. And uh, imagine what it would sound like. But they, imagine a little choir, uh, the wonder, you're wonderful. But if a little choir angels at every Mass, do you know what I mean? Imagine how class that would be. But he doesn't, like, he entrusts the church to us. And if you look at the church's history, I mean, it's rocky. It's a rocky history we have. I mean, the, the, the teachings of the church have always been correct, but the people in the church have always been sinners. So our history, like, it's been very checkered, as does every church. Why? Because it's composed of human beings. So of course, there's, of course there are issues and problems and infidelity and, 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 and so on. So recognizing our absolute, our need for God, that we cannot do anything good without him. And recognizing as well then that, that he is God and can do anything. Because at times, I mean, I know looking at myself as well, like I, I think, 
I could be this way, I should be that way, I should know these things, I should be able to do all the things, that there should be more hours in the day to do everything that needs to be done, and, and all these things that I would like to be. But at the end of the day, everything here, this is, this is the Lord's mission. Everything that we try to achieve in the church, every renewal strategy, it's all the Lord. And last night I was talking to uh, some priest friends of mine, and we were just talking how, about how the church is in a bit of a mess at the moment, you know, with things were bad before COVID as regards, you know, practice rates and vocations and so on. Uh, but once COVID passes, what's going to be left? It's going to be, it's going to be messy. It's going to be messy. A lot of the older generation may not come back to Mass. A lot of the younger generation have gotten used to not going. So it, there's going to be an awful lot to rebuild. And who's going to do the rebuilding if our clergy are just that bit older? So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. And then at the same time, you see, this is today's reading, you know. Do not be afraid, Jacob. And when we say Jacob or Israel, by the way, that's God's chosen people, which is today the church. Do not be afraid, O oh, you Catholics. Poor worms. All ye in holy family, puny mites. Do not be afraid, for I, the Lord, your God, am holding you by the right hand. I will do this. I will help you. And that's such a, such a relief that, that the Lord has a plan. Now, we still have to do our bit. And this is, as I said, this balance that we have to maintain. We still have to do our bit. I still have to do what's within my power. So it's a great habit to get into. At the end of the day, like to do the examination, uh, if we're doing an, like an examination of contents or reviewing our day before we go to sleep, to think like, what, Lord, what did, what did you give me? What have you given me today? Or what have you given me in general? Like the abilities I have, you've given me certain things, be they in intelligence or organization or musical ability, or the ability to make people feel loved and wanted, uh, the ability to serve. Some people just love serving, you know. I mean, I, I love looking around our community and there's different traits that people have that I'd love to be better at. Like, I shouldn't mean, name, mention names, but I will. You know, when I see like, how, how serving Liam is, or just how kind of pure and innocent like Sarah is, I think, you know, I'd love to be like that, you know. And it's good, it's good that we look at each other and see how inspirational people can be. For us, you know, that they, they excel in, in certain virtues. I want to grow in virtue too. So it's good to see people who are, who are an example to us. But I, when I review my day at the end, Lord, what have you given me? Right? Because we, we shouldn't say, I'm not like this person or that person, or I've got nothing. You have. You have got something. You have been blessed in, in some way. You absolutely have. Do not deny the grace of God and the work of God and the gifts of God in your life. You have been given something. Now, we've been given things in different degrees, but you have been given something. So what did you do with it? So you have this ability to make people feel loved. How did you use it? You have this ability to, to draw people together. You know, some people, generally speaking, we're fairly aware of what we're good at. You know, if, if, I mean, you'll know if you're a leader because people will follow you. So with that leadership ability you have, what, what, what did you do with it? Or you know that you're a good organizer, you know you're a good worker, what, what did you do with it? Because th there is a lot to do, there's a, a church to rebuild. But as the psalm says, if the Lord does not build the house, in vain do the laborers toil. We can do all we want and more. If the Lord isn't at work here, nothing, nothing will change or grow. It's the Lord's work. And that should, in some way, it takes the responsibility of us. We still have to work. We still have to do our part. But ultimately, it's God. Ultimately, it's the Lord who will renew the church. In the meantime, I do what I can today. The Lord has given me certain abilities. I'm trying to use those as best I can today. That's all I can do. I can't change COVID situation or the world government or I can't do, I can't change it. I have no effect on that. I can do what I can do today. Remain faithful in prayer, remain hope filled, bringing love and consolation where and when I can. That's what I can do today. That's how I build up the kingdom. Because ultimately it's the Lord. It's the Lord who will do everything. It's the Lord who will renew the church.
puny mites as we are. He paints a beautiful picture of hope, a picture of life. In the desert I will plant juniper, plane trees and cypress side by side, so that men may see and know, may all observe and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this, that the Holy One of Israel has created it. I tell you, do not be afraid. I will help you.